Hey, what's up, guys? Episode 5. We're doing things a little different today because uh, trying to find time to be able to record these in the middle of moving the shop. I got my boy here, Adam. Lakimi is his Instagram. Go check it out. He's probably the top artist in the world right now. And I'm lucky enough to have him over here. Today, we're going to talk through this episode while he's here butchering my arm. Let's get back to the episode. Last time we left off, I explained to you guys how I wanted to get away from all the BMW stuff we were doing. In November 2017 was when I bought my first exotic. I wanted to get into Lamborghinis, McLarens, Ferraris. <clears throat> I used to go and travel to Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and you know China and so on. When you usually go to countries like that, you come in as a tuner. The people there respect you because you're a tuner. They don't really look at you as what you have or what you drive or whatever it is. But in the US market, trying to go to these shows and trying to work on cars that you know were a lot more expensive than the cars that we were driving was a very, very hard thing to do because a lot of people don't want to trust some guy who is just driving a regular car and asking you to work on their you know, high-end exotic. I had bought a lot of BMWs, really nice BMWs, M8s, M6s, M4s, M3s, all kinds of stuff, but I never had enough credit for high-end auto. I mean, you know, some of these cars were 100 something plus thousand, but getting into Ferraris and Lamborghinis and stuff, you're talking about $300,000 over. So I needed some kind of backing for them to be able to let me get a Lamborghini. So I basically, again, asked my father if he could help me. At this point, the Gintani was doing pretty good and I had put a good amount of money on the side, but I kept telling my dad, like, I want to change the whole perception of the company and get away from all this stuff. And in order to do that, I would need to get an exotic. And the first time I told him that he looked at me and he was like, who the hell are you to drive a Lamborghini? I'm at this age, I've never driven a Lamborghini in my life and you're gonna go buy a Lamborghini at, at this age? And I'm like, listen, dad, it's not about me having a Lamborghini or owning a Lamborghini. It's about changing the business. And all I need you to do for me is co-sign because they wouldn't let me get it. You need to have high-end auto to be able to get these cars. So I basically told him here, listen, I'll put this much down, which was like $50,000 at that time. And the payments would be like $2,500 a month or something at that point. I told him, I'll give you six months payments up front. And if you don't see this going anywhere, you can literally take the car, keep the payments, keep the down payment and sell the car and just take the money from it. So basically before I even decided to, you know, get into the exotic thing, we never had an exotic at home. We had a bunch of M3s, M8s, this, that. We had a Aston Martin, the Vantage that I told you guys about. And we had our minis and stuff, but we never had a Lambo. We never had a Ferrari or anything like that. So, you know, me being the youngest in the family and going out to buy, you know, a Lamborghini was like, dude, what the hell? So we bought a Rosso Mars Red LP610 Huracan. Who's calling me? Drew Johnson. Hello. Alex. Yo. I just want you to know there was never any hard feelings and I don't I, I would never blame you for for being mad at me or angry at me for I'm being not, bro. Was a long I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't hold me. grudges with like that, bro. Trust me. You know, dude, what matters is now. We all we doing? we all live and learn, right? Everything changes. It's all good, man. Dude, I wanted to tell you, Alex, dude, I always you always had a good heart, you're a good dude. You got you gotta come see the new shop, man. Yeah, dude, I'll stop by and check it out. I mean, my son is really into cars. Yeah, he, he'd love to come by. He's he's brought you guys up. He's like, Dad, you're telling me you see their website, their Instagram and stuff. These cars are amazing. I'm like, yeah, I know those guys. <laughs> It'd be great to come by and, and, and see and see the shop. Right? Yeah, we're moving everything right now, so in a few weeks we'll be settled down. So whenever you want, hit me up. We're actually, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna have a huge grand opening, but that's gonna be in June. I'm real happy for you, man. Well, let's put let's put something together. Maybe we could all go out and have some drinks or something and chill out. Sounds good, broski. Okay, brother. Nice talking to you. Thank you for calling me, man. It means a lot. I do say hi to your brother for me. I will, bro. I will. Thank you so much. Thanks for calling, right, man. I'll see you care. soon. Thank you, bro. See you, brother. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. That was Drew. Drew Johnson. That was uh, 
the guy who put us on the map for the BMW stuff and then switched over to ESS. But, you know, life's too short happens. You just learn from it and you move on and appreciate what you've gone through. And that's like mad respect for Drew to even do that or even make a phone call like that. So I love you, Drew. You're still in my heart. No, we just had a little uh, touch up uh, session, but we still got a lot more stuff to do. But obviously you guys have seen this stuff uh, in the video previously, but that's my grandfather. That's um, the rest of the stuff that we just did. This is a famous, I mean, it was the most famous church in Armenia. This is a clock that I had done, you know, a few years ago, which Adam's fixing up here is an old old it was an old tattoo that nobody would help me redo or fix except for adam all right so now that adam's gone and he touched up some of my stuff that i needed let's continue we we're talking about buying the huracan buying the huracan was an extremely extremely exciting uh time for all of us at the shop the second we got it we took it apart we wanted to finalize making a production kit for uh the twin turbo stuff we had made a twin turbo kit on my buddy's car my buddy sabi's car and that car was one of the first cars that actually went and ran some good half mile uh traps at shift sector it was tuned on a factory ecu we're making like 8 psi or 9 psi back then on that car we trapped 194 miles per hour at shift sector for a factory ecu car that basically opened up our avenue to be able to work on these exotics to be able to go to shows attend shows cars and coffees and be able to mingle with people that actually own these cars you know it's hard to mingle with guys who own these cars when you don't have one especially when you're trying to you know do work for them they kind of like don't trust you until they see that you've actually had your own car and you've developed stuff on it and it makes the customer feel a lot more comfortable that you've actually played with your own car and developed stuff on it before they let you touch theirs so that car changed everything for us you know we started getting a lot more exotics in to tune to build exhaust systems for we started building exhaust systems for Lambos, McLarens, started doing a lot of Porsche stuff. We tuned a lot of McLaren stuff. Right after we had the Huracan, my LP610, we had gotten it ready to send it to SEMA show. Right before SEMA show, we did the bumpers, the fenders, and the wheels, and we put the kit on it, and we were so excited. It was gonna be like presented at SEMA at my buddy's uh, booth at BD Wheels. Eric took the car to SEMA. At that time, uh, my wife had just Give him uh, birth to my son, so we I, I couldn't attend SEMA. My car was there. We basically took it to SEMA. The car got a lot of attention, and we we're getting ready to start making a production kit for the, for the twin turbo. And we get the car back from SEMA, and we're at home with my wife one morning. It's like 7 a.m., and my buddy calls me, and he's like, "We're going on this uh, drive, you know, come come hang out with us." And it was it had been weeks since I had left the house and done anything like that. So my wife's like, "Dude, leave, like go." Go enjoy your time with your friends. Go have some fun with the car. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I get up 7 a.m., man. Start the car. I'm all excited. This is like the first time I'm actually driving the car. So jump in the car. Get out of our condo back then. I make a ride onto Nordoff Street in Northridge. And I'm literally, there's like fog everywhere. It's like horrible weather. I have no gas. The car's on E85. So I need to try to make it to the nearest E85 station. So I'm just like cruising down Nordoff and driving and all of a sudden dude some lady in a honda crv decides she's gonna make a u-turn from in front of her house to the other side of the street without even looking not even seeing that i'm there so she literally just pops out in front of me and i slam on the brakes trying to stop but it's impossible like the floor is already all like moist so the car locks up and i'm like man i i don't want to you know t-bone this lady from underneath so i try to shift the car to the left try to throw the car to the left and boom straight into this lady you know and man i was so pissed off and i was so hurt it was like my first exotic just got demolished and i get out of the car and i i was ready to just you know i could only see red i had like blinders on and i run up to this car i have no idea who's in there you know and i run up to this car and i open the door and I'm like mother and I look and it's some old lady in there and she's like oh my god I didn't see you 
you know, I didn't have my glasses on and I'm like, dude, why the hell are you driving without glasses if you can't see? You know what I mean? I was like, you almost killed me. If I went underneath your car, I would have like, it was going to take my freaking head off. Dude, the cops come, it's chaos. My car is destroyed. We have pictures of this, so we'll drop some pictures of this so you guys can see it, my poor car. And I was so sad, man. It was like our first car that we were gonna develop all this stuff on, go into production with the twin turbo kit. Everything got put on hold for our production stuff for the twin turbo kit. So we went through the whole insurance process. I decided, I'm like, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't get another Huracan because at this point, uh, the Huracan market was like, you know, getting flooded. There was a lot of companies doing twin turbo kits for Huracans and you know, we had Sheepy up the street from us and they were doing pretty well with them. They had a lot of clientele. So it was like going to be hard for us to actually compete with all this stuff. You know, obviously you have Underground, which are the kings of those cars. And uh, it's just a big flooded market now, especially till this day, even though we do make a kit for it and we do build them for, you know, specific clients that want us to build their twin turbo setups for those cars. I decided, you know what, maybe we get something different. And that's when we decided to go get the 720S. The day we bought the 720S, I bought a spare motor for the car because I knew we were going to blow it up. I was ready to send that car. I wanted to make a lot of power, you know, and I, I knew there was going to be issues just like any car when you're taking it and modifying it on factory internals, you know, bump into stuff that's the weekend and you want to, you know, make it stronger and create new products to be able to make the power you want to make. So we bought the 720, we bought a motor, we brought the 720 in, you know, developed an exhaust system for it. Uh, did some intercoolers for it, started putting bigger turbos on it. While we were doing that, we took the motor apart, uh, looked at all the stuff that we see that we can make, you know, improve. We started tuning a lot of 720s at that point and we were doing great with that market. And then we took the motor and with my buddy Marco from Magnus Motorsports, I'm sure you guys see it in our, you know, stories and stuff like that. The only person I trust to actually assemble the motors that we build is Marco. That's the only person I want to touch it. His nasty Italian fingers, drinking coffee, eating salami while he's putting these motors together. You know it's gonna come out top notch. So Marco's our number one go-to. We developed a bunch of stuff for the McLarens with Marco. So if you guys have a McLaren, I know we don't advertise it too much, which we will when we get into the new shop. We have a lot of product for the McLaren. So we did three different designs of rods, different designs of pistons. Uh, we did cranks. We actually scanned the entire block and we're thinking about doing a fully uh, billet block for these cars because people have been putting rods through the block on these cars and you can't buy just a block from McLaren and you can't just buy main bearings and you know uh, rod bearings and stuff like that. The only thing that McLaren will sell you for a 720 is a head, head bolts, and basically head gaskets. If you wanna to try to buy any other internals from them, they won't sell it. So even when we went to start building the motors on these cars, we had to pay a bunch of companies to make rod bearings for us, main bearings for us, which cost a lot of money because we had to put a huge order in. So we built a lot of parts for it and we have a lot of parts in stock. We even have core engines basically now. So where if you do put a order in with us for a built motor setup, you could drive around on your motor while we're building the built motor. And then once your car comes in, we literally take your motor out. We use it as a core and we put it in. So you don't have that downtime with your car. So that's something we're focusing on doing with a bunch of the cars. So we, we focused on the 720 stuff for a while. It was pretty fun. And we're still, you know, going to be building a lot of stuff for that. You guys know, we built Damon's uh, 720 GTR, which that car is pretty sick you know that car made 1300 wheel horsepower it's a lot of fun to drive 720s are extremely fast extremely light and you don't need too much power to make them you know do the times that they actually put down being able to do you know parts for all these cool cars my dream car was always an aventador i just loved the the look of the car the presence you know an aventador has been around for a very long time but even when you see an Aventador on the street today, there isn't really a lot of cars out there that has the presence of an Aventador. An Aventador, when it comes down the street, especially if it's black, it's it's scary. You know what I mean? It's like the Batmobile coming towards you. It's such a sick car. And that 6.5 liter V12 naturally aspirated, just something about that gigantic motor. You know, there's no replacement for displacement. So can you imagine what you could do power-wise for that car and 
how much fun you could have with it. So I was constantly telling the guys like, dude, we need to try to find a way to get a, a Ventador. So when everything started, you know, going downhill and COVID hit and all that crap happened and everybody was scared to, you know, have expensive stuff and people were too busy buying toilet paper and paper towel and stacking up their houses. We were in the middle of trying to go on and buy every single car we possibly can. So we actually, when everything happened and people were going crazy, I remember my friends were like running to the store, buying like cat food, buying all this stuff. I'm like, dude, what are you guys tripping on? And they're like, dude, where are you going? And I'm like, I'm on my way to Palm Springs to pick up a 600 LT McLaren. And they're like, what the hell is wrong with you, dude? Like people are scared. Like, like the world is over, over this, you know, virus and you're going to pick up a 600 LT McLaren for the shop. And I'm like, yeah, man, when the hell in the world are you ever going to buy a $300,000 car for $2,500 down, $2,200 a month. You know what I mean? So they're like, hell yeah, we're going to buy a McLaren and we're going to buy an Aventador. This is like the best time to buy one. So I called my buddy Donnie from Iluso, which Donnie's always helped me out with all my cars. And I'm like, dude, I need an Aventador. And he's like, dude, I got the best one. And I'm like, I want an SV black. He's like, you couldn't tell me this like two weeks before we just shipped the car back to Florida. We had it over here. And I'm like, dude, that's the car. I want that car. And the car was listed for like $450,000 or something like that, which was cheap. Uh, the car had, I think 1100 miles on it or something when I went to go buy it. And obviously Donnie pulled off his magic and I don't know how we got the car for 400,000. Our other good friend, which is an NFL player, bad guy, Frank Clark, uh, used to play for Casey and so on. Frank sends us his SVJ and he's like, you gotta make this thing rip. You gotta make it scream. And, you know, we were making exhaust systems for the Aventadors back then, but we still hadn't done like that real F1 sound. So we were always watching the guys from Japan doing that, which those guys are 100% the ones who started all that. Yes, they started that whole F1 sound. Japan was the first to do it. We know that we get like hammered with that nonstop. You guys didn't do it. Yeah, we know we didn't do it, dude. We, we heard them do it. We fell in love with it. And we we're like, dude, we got to bring this into us so we used to look at the brilliance exhaust and listen to it and it was unbelievable and that's what basically made me fall in love with the aventador was that system and, and i was like man we got to do our own and we got to change it up a little bit uh everybody thinks that it's just in the rear section where the x is where the sound comes from that's not true uh, if you guys look at all the systems out there now a lot of people use that you know design to make the same sound, but it doesn't only come down to that part to make that system sound like that. It's very important to make the system equal length because it's not equal length from the factory. When we got ours and we had Frank's car in, we basically had pulled the headers out and we measured the volume in each header. So we took a lot of time to try to make sure that we make everything literally perfectly equal length. So if you look at some of the other stuff that are on the market and then you look at ours, if you look at the header extensions and you put them next to each other, obviously it's a little hard to see ours because we Inconel heat shield every single one, but you'll see that ours doesn't just have like a little bend to extend it. It's got like a complete twist. We've measured out, you know, how much longer one side has to be than the other to actually balance everything out. Also, we spent a lot of time on sizing and the way that we've designed the collector, how it merges together. A lot of people just take a pipe and take two pipes and they just stick it into a three inch pipe. That doesn't really flow well. So we did a lot of designing, testing to make sure that system flows perfectly and also not oversizing the system because when you're doing these systems on these cars, you're taking away a lot of back pressure. And the 6.5 liter doesn't really make low end power. It's very, you know, laggy on the bottom end. And when you take all that back pressure away from it, it actually makes it even worse. So if you don't size everything correctly, the car will end up being slower on the bottom end than it is from factory. So we messed with a bunch of different sizes to be able to keep and actually add to that low end and mid range power and to not lose any of it. And then obviously make all the power up top where the car shines with the big motor. We're probably the first ones in the US to make a system like that. Our system doesn't sound exactly the same as the Brilliant system, there's a different tone between both of them, and that's because of the way we do our header extensions. Uh, it's not exactly the same, they are very similar. And now there are systems out there that sound similar to ours too, but at the end of the day, it's not 
only about sound. It's about the performance of the product and how it works. So we started selling the living out of those systems. The Aventador is what put us on the map and has brought us where we are today. We decided that we were going to twin turbo it and build a crazy kit for it. I put a lot of time into the twin turbo kit for the Aventador. Um, I wanted it to be very different than anything else on the market. Obviously, there isn't a lot of competition in the Aventador twin turbo platform. It's basically us and Underground. Uh, Underground has been around for years. I mean, obviously, they've been the, the kings of the Lamborghini game, but doesn't mean that there is no room for somebody else to be able to come in and do stuff. So we went and started developing a bunch of stuff for the Aventador from engine internals to different clutches for different levels of power. Now we've actually broken a transmission on one of the cars and literally destroyed a second gear out of it because of the amount of power that we we're making. And the only people right now that actually have a gear set for an Aventador is Underground. Obviously it's a proprietary to them, so they use it on their stuff, which I fully understand. It's uh, actually pretty cool that they keep it that way because it doesn't turn into the V10 platform. Right now, if you wanna build a V10, everything's readily available. So if you wanted to build a 2000 horsepower Huracan, just like the one sitting right behind me, you could literally get the parts for that car off the shelf in the matter of like two weeks, you could have everything for that car to be able to build a 2000 horsepower Huracan. When it comes down to an Aventador, it's not like that. You know, we have to do everything from scratch. We're basically one of the only companies who do do those cars. So we thought it would be a much better idea to concentrate on that platform, that car, and try to push it as far as we can. And that's what we're on the verge of doing with the new shop and where the company is going today. We also have our Revolto that actually just got onto the ship this last week and it should hopefully be here in six weeks. So the first thing we're gonna do, the second we get that car, I'll probably take it up and down the street, record a video for you guys so you guys see it. It is the exact copy, like twin of our SVJ, uh, Neuro Nemesis, black and red interior. We're like so thrilled to get that car. We can't wait to get our hands on it. Obviously the V12 is still in there. It's got the hybrid, thousand horsepower from factory. We just can't wait to build the F1 system for one, uh, you know, for one of those and get them out there for all our customers that have been constantly DMing us and emailing us waiting for the system because there's a lot of guys who are getting their cars. And the second we develop the exhaust system for that car, instantly we're pulling it apart and twin turboing it. So again, our main focus with the company, I think moving forward is gonna be the Aventador stuff, the Revolto stuff, um, we are doing some pretty cool stuff for the Porsche 992. We are going to get back into doing a lot of stuff for the McLaren. We're actually going to take my McLaren, my 720S, and hopefully build it for the shop in New York. So Gintani, New York, we have a lot of changes coming for that place and we'll obviously announce it. You know, we're growing in very many ways in these last, you know, few months with the new shop, with New York, with uh, hopefully setting up a shop in Dubai and a couple other places. But we're gonna be doing the 720 for the New York shop. So we'll have a car out there that we could go to the Pocono races with and come and show you guys what we could do. We'll have a car that representing the New York shop since we haven't had anything over there. We have big management changes over there, ownership changes over there that are coming. And we have a, a lot of projects lined up at the new shop guys they're literally on the lift all of them are on the lift right now we're just moving all the tools we got four aventadors lined up next to each other getting twin turbo we got two 992 turbo s is getting built we have the 720 we're redoing the rwb finally so we're going to shoot a huge thing on the rwb we're putting a tur you know a turbo motor into that thing so obviously i can't forget about my boys damon and dave from dde those guys have done a lot for us. So we started working with them maybe like five or plus years ago. It was year, probably four or five years ago and Alex is such a character. I wasn't really sure what to think of him to be honest with you. He was kind of scary. You know, Alex is just a good guy. He's a, he's a family guy. I really respect that. We work with a lot of people in the industry and it's always face value, but Alex, the one guy we've gone out, had dinners with him. We met his family, been to his house. He's a really good guy. He works really hard. He's always got 500 things on his mind running around. 
stressed about something, like always. The first car that we did anything on was actually the F12. We put an exhaust system on there and then tuned it for them. And then we did Dave's McLaren and then helped them, you know, fix all the stuff on the F12. Now that they've destroyed that car and ripped it apart and they're making it a bad freaking Jim Connor nasty drift car that Mike is going ham on, which is bad. I wish we had time then we could have done something like that for them, but Mike's got it under control. I think he knows what he's doing. We brought Dave's MP412C to Alex, my Aventador SVJ to Alex. He makes an amazing system for that car and tuned it. My manual Murcielago, he helped do uh, like a version two on my twin turbo F12 project. <laughs> Got that car to actually be a lot more drivable on the street and should be really theatrical with like the flame tune and stuff like that. He also worked on Dave's 6M5 LT, currently working on my Senna over my shoulder. We trust Alex with the projects that we've brought him. And for the most part, you know, we've never had any issues. Like that's why we love Alex and both from a business and a personal, personal perspective. Those guys really helped us a lot with uh, the Aventador stuff. Damon put that car all over the place. They took it to Gumball, you know, always uh, tagging us and putting the word out there, sending customers to us and helping us out. Obviously, relationship goes both ways. You know, a lot of people always say, oh, you guys, how do you guys deal with it? And, well, you guys probably give everything for free. That That's all bull. Damon respects the fact that we have a business, we have a family, just like he has and what he does for a living on YouTube. Always takes care of us. We build a lot of cool stuff together. The 720 was a great build, which we're bringing back after, you know, what happened to it. Saya Creative Bespoke is uh, almost done putting like 10,000 hours into trying to make the body kit fit. Um, I was just there last week, which it's coming out pretty nice. You guys are going to be excited. I know there's a lot of DDE fans that watch our channel. Thanks to the DDE guys. Look forward to that. That car's going to be cool. We're going to re go through it and make sure everything's okay. Obviously, um, we still have the SVJ to build. We're going to twin turbo that at the new shop. And I'm sure, you know, me, Damon and Dave will come up with some dump to do. Outside of all of this, you know, the business side of things, Alex and, and myself really get along because again, we're both married kids family guys we love to go to work but we also love to go home be with our families and so i've had the opportunity of going over to alex's house you know meeting his wife and his his son and things like that and we've had a great time just hanging out shooting about cars but also like we both like tequila hell yeah alex has some really premium tequila and so he's introduced me to some really good tequila and we've had some great conversations it's hard because everyone's busy but when we do get together, it's always really fun. And Alex is like, he gets our humor. Because Damon and I talk a lot of Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode of Gintani. It's basically DDE watered down with worst hosts and characters. Content we did three years ago. Oh, Alex at the burner doing donuts, how original. Peace out. <laughs> and Alex gets right into it. Sometimes he can't read it, and I can see in his eyes, he knows I'm being serious, so I push him harder. You can watch his head explode, but he's a really good sport. Come on for your birthday. I want to go out there. Come on. Oh, come on, man. Put it on, man. It's extra small. <laughs> Come on, put it on. Come on, you put it on. It's fun to be with the boys and like shoot. It's all just for fun. The future of DD and Gintani collabs are unlimited. We're here to support Alex, and I know Alex supports us. It's gonna get wilder and crazier because as the both of us have grown, we're both getting to places where we're starting to achieve and check all those boxes of having all the things we've ever dreamed of. And when we put those two things together, because we have so many things that are in alignment, he has a shop that does things that our shop will never do, that we can come and do things together to blow people's minds. And we have a place where Alex can come and let loose with his cars because we know Alex likes to slay tires and do all sorts of dumb crazy. It's gonna be one hell of an exciting future between his crazy cars, our crazy cars, and our two shops coming in together. It's gonna be some of the wildest content. I think we're gonna honestly take things to the, a whole nother level on the internet. I'm going to the block. I gotta go there. I gotta take the 812 there and go destroy the tires before I get rid of that car because it's going up for sale. We gotta do one last send and get a nice video. Damon loves that car. 
the V12 sound screaming over there. So thanks a lot, Damon, Dave. I love you guys. I know everybody enjoys our shenanigans on videos, so hopefully we could continue to do that. Thank you for always supporting me and uh, believing in my company, man. It really means a lot to me. Congratulations on all your success. I love you. I appreciate you. I want our friendship to be one that's around till the end of my time. And uh, let's just keep doing some more crazy together. Flame tunes till we die, brother. And uh, I always got your back. If you ever need anything, I'm the guy you call in the middle of the night. I'll ask no questions, even if it involves going to hurt some people. Hey Alex, I just wanna say I really appreciate this humble ego project of yours for your documentary on yourself that you produced yourself. One day I'll probably have the balls to do it for myself. It just For me, it feels really unnatural to be that arrogant, but for you, I get it with the gold and all the jewelry and all that. What did you say? But yeah, I know, it's cool that you produce your own documentary on yourself. It's what they do for celebrities too, like when E. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to say, Alex, I appreciate everything you've done for us over the years. You know, we asked for a lot. It's a lot of high pressure. And as a thank you on March 15th, we're dropping a new merch at shopdd.com. So if you want to grab a hat or a hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> DD out. <laughs> <laughs> Mario I Luigi. I want to sincerely thank number one, my family, my dad, my mom, my brother, my wife. She's been like my backbone from day one, believing in me and, you know, trusting in my dream, my parents, my brother. I mean, unreal. Um, my guys that have stuck with me for so many years, NJ, Danny, I'm getting a little emotional here. It's kind of, uh, but um, I missed a couple people, especially one very, very important person because without that person, I, I seriously, this company would never be where it is today. Uh, Ruben, I love you, man. And uh, thank you for teaching me everything I know. I wouldn't be without you, honestly. And uh, thank you for your, teaching me every single day, you know, being another older brother to me and my son, Vinny, you're the buddy. Thank you guys. And again, I'm getting emotional. So let's stop this. Thank you.